time for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles. Now, if you guys follow my channel, you know that back in February of this year, I partnered with a local company called Puget Systems. Now they're a custom computer builder based out of Auburn, Washington. And pretty much all they do is build custom computers to order and consult people for what their needs are and try to design them systems that suit those needs. Well, when I approached them, I told them that I wanted a machine to basically be my new primary build for the Nerd Cave here. And my prerequisites for it is it had to be a killer gaming machine. It had to be above all else a great workstation for multitasking and rendering and doing n number of other operations. And it had to be quiet because you guys know my old water cooled rig was a little overzealous on the fans and it was pretty loud. So I wanted something silent. They said this was right up their alley and they built me something that was exactly to spec. So now I'm gonna show you guys the computer in this video. We're gonna go through and do some benchmarking on it. We're gonna play some games on it. And I'm gonna let you guys know how satisfied I am with the end result. So guys, stay tuned because it's about to get nerdy. Well guys, here is the build deployed in the Nerd Cave and I have been using it for a couple of months. Now this is the Puget Genesis 2 Quiet Edition build and it's actually a top spec build, at least it was at the time that it was produced. And if you guys haven't seen my whole workstation, uh, here's just a little bit of a glance. I have three 1080p Samsung 6 Series HD TVs and one 4K mono price panel up above that this is all driving. If you guys haven't seen my room tour video, it's probably one of my most popular videos and linked in the video description. When you receive your computer it comes with this flat box and inside of it is a lot of important information do not throw it away here on top you have a document telling you how to properly unbox your system now this is important because you don't want to damage the packaging material because Puget Systems gives you lifetime free labor on upgrades for your system purchased through them and the warranty work so you want to keep your packaging together so you can send the system back if you want to take advantage of any of that you also get a personalized folder from them with a picture of your system on the front and the number of your specific build which you can check online and the first document inside as a message from John Bach to you and it shows you all of the people that worked on your system. I think that's actually really cool. And then here you have the serial numbers and keys, which hopefully I covered up or you guys now got my keys and you got some pictures of the heat buildup that they used forward looking infrared to figure out. Now there are a lot of pages in this manual talking about how the back panel works and how to plug things in a lot of stuff that most people know. And you also have some troubleshooting and some frequently asked questions because who knows you might have bought one of these computers for your mom or grandma and she might not have any freaking clue what she's doing and this would all be very helpful but hey we're all experts here on YouTube right so these pages are probably uh, pr pretty worthless you also get a build checklist that shows you every single step that your computer went through from start to finish through build through testing um, absolutely everything and it tells you who did it and on what date they did it I mean it's pretty impressive and you also get benchmarking results in here um, talking about temperatures and frame rates and numerous different benchmarks we're actually going to run a lot of these benchmarks uh, throughout the course of this video but you can see every single step of the way every single spec on your system every single little piece of hardware is all documented inside of this manual which I actually think is pretty damn cool. Now in the very back of the folder you get a USB thumb drive that can be used to recover the system along with instructions and you also get a ton of other discs. Now you get the restore DVD that basically allows you to bring the system back to exactly where it was when you purchased the system and you also get all of the discs with the drivers and software for all of the hardware which is really nice just all to have in one convenient place. Now the case selected for this build is the Fractal Design XL R2. And the first thing that Puget Systems does is remove the window out of the case and create a custom cut window that's thicker acrylic. And it allows them to place the fan in any size in any location that they want for a very, very specific build, which I think is a cool touch. Now Puget Systems loves building quiet computers and that's one of the reasons why they selected the Fractal Design XL R2. And it's because the back panel is completely covered in this dense sound dampening material that absorbs a lot of sound and vibration and makes the system a lot quieter. Well, I'm not gonna lie, it does add a lot of weight to the system, but in this application, I think it's completely justified. Since the goal of the system is to remain as quiet as possible on air, they selected knock two 140 millimeter fans for the intake and the exhaust on this system and the reason being is you can turn these at just a couple of hundred rpm and they don't make any audible noise yet they still move a lot of air plus they have an amazing warranty so i can look past the ugliness factor 
Since multitasking performance and stability are so important to me on this build, I opted to go with two E5 2643 V3 Xeons. These are the six core processors with 20 megabytes of L3 cache each. Both processors are being cooled by Noctua NH U12DX i4 coolers. Now these things are dead silent and highly efficient. The only downside to the Xeons is you can't overclock them like the i7s because they're multiplier locked, but that's okay because I more than make up for that having two of them with a total of 12 physical cores and 24 logical cores. This thing is a beast when it comes to multitasking. Since this is a dual processor machine, it's pretty thirsty, so we went ahead and put 64 gigabytes of DDR4 registered ECC memory in it. Now, for those of you guys that don't know what ECC RAM is, it's a special type of memory that workstations are compatible with that can detect detect if there's a corruption in the memory and correct it in real time, whereas conventional memory would just crash your computer or corrupt your data. All right, so this thing's got all kinds of CPU. So what about GPU? We decided to put in two Asus GeForce GTX 980 four gigabyte Strix Edition cards. Now the Strix Edition was selected because it's a non-reference design that's very, very silent in the cooling department and it vents the heat inside of the case so you don't get that fan wine blowing out the back. And another cool feature is the fans don't even need to turn if the card isn't under load. Puget Systems also custom laser cuts these GPU brackets to keep your GPUs from sagging under the massive weight of the heat sinks. I wanted some fast storage in the system, so here you can see we have a Samsung XP941 512GB M2 SSD and it even has a custom heat sink applied to it by Puget Systems to mitigate any heat buildup problems. And the other one is mounted in a PCIe 4X slot with a converter board and for additional 1TB of fast storage we have a Samsung 840 EVO mounted in one of the drive bays. Now all of the cables in the system are concealed behind the rear panel and one thing I really like that they do is not only do they zip tie all the cables but they also apply hot glue to all of the connections so things don't accidentally come disconnected over time and I really like that. Now this system needs a lot of clean power, so we went with the EVGA Supernova 1200P2, which is a 94% efficient platinum rated power supply that runs very silent. Now you can't build a system like this without having some custom LED lighting, so they ran a strip up the side here, and they also ran a strip along the top, and it gives you a really cool effect looking through, and it really helps to illuminate that custom laser etched logo. Since I use this machine primarily for making videos like this, they included a USB 3.0 multi-card reader and a Blu-ray drive. And it might sound cheesy, but one of my favorite things about this computer is the custom laser etching on the front panel and on the side, because it just gives it that personalized touch and I smile every time I look at it. All right, so now that you've had a look at the hardware, let's go ahead and run some benchmarks and look at the performance. Here I have the Heaven benchmark and we're gonna run it on the extreme profile settings. Just a heads up, I am speeding up all the benchmarks, otherwise this video would be 20 hours long. So I score a 37.13 with an average frames per second of 147.4, which for the extreme profile is actually pretty respectable. All right, let's try another popular benchmark. Here's the 3D Mark Fire Strike demo. Now I'm gonna go ahead and run the normal profile first and then we'll work our way up to the ultra profile. Well, as you can see, I scored a 21,241, which is an incredibly respectable score, and it puts me in the top 1% bucket of all scores reported. All right, the previous two benchmarks were gauged towards DirectX and gaming performance. Let's go ahead and try something that's a little bit more professional. Here we have Cinebench R15 by Maxim, which is gonna be more of a professional benchmark for measuring OpenGL performance, which is what's more commonly used in professional 3D applications. This benchmark shows I'm sitting right around 159 frames per second, which is pretty good. Okay, now we're gonna run a CPU rendering test, and this is purely just gonna use the CPUs and none of the GPU. And here we score a 2100 using the massive processing power of both those Xeons. All right, so now we've seen the performance of the CPUs and the GPUs. So let's go ahead and benchmark the storage. Here we're running Crystal Disk Mark against my C drive, which is one of the Samsung M2 drives. These Samsung M2 drives fly. You can see I'm over a gigabyte a second on the read and nearly a gigabyte a second on the write. All right, just to give you guys some comparison, I'm gonna go ahead and benchmark my F drive, which is the Samsung 840 Evo SSD, which is absolutely no slouch. As you can see, it's only about half the speed of the M2 drives. 
All right, guys, well, let's circle back and run the Fire Strike Ultra benchmark. Now, this is the most intense benchmark that 3D Mark has right now. And a special thanks to 3D Mark for contacting me on Twitter when they noticed I was running these benchmarks and giving me a license so that I could run this test for you guys. And even with the Fire Strike Ultra, we still score a 6,652, which is a fantastic score. All right, well, now that we ran some benchmarks, let's do some real world gaming performance. Here I have Grand Theft Auto 5 for the PC. And you can see here I'm in the graphics settings showing you guys that I actually have the graphics settings cranked way up. I mean, most of the settings are on very high or high and I'm running at 1080p resolution right now, but we'll go ahead and kick that up using Nvidia Surround a little bit later. Now, right here, I'm just running the benchmark in Grand Theft Auto, and you can see there's frames per second down at the bottom showing right around 100 frames per second, but you also see a lot of purple text in the upper right-hand side of the screen. Now, you guys, I use a program called MSI Afterburner uh, that I install, and it also has another little side-loaded program called RevaTuner, and it allows you to have all those statistics overlaid on any DirectX application or game, and it's actually very cool. I'll have a link in the video description for all of this stuff, guys. Now, I'm absolutely happy with the performance here. As long as I'm staying above 60 frames per second, I'm fine because I'm playing on 60 hertz panels. But if you're a hardcore gamer and you're playing on 120 or 144 hertz panels, you may want to like knock the graphics settings down a little bit to achieve those frame rates. But right now, I have room to even improve the graphics if I want further to sit right around 60 frames per second. And I find that even when you're playing the real game, you stay well above 100 frames per second, even with the graphics settings at a very, very high level, like they are at 1080p. And if you haven't played Grand Theft Auto before, this is pretty much how you play it. You just run around and you just punch people, punch people, get a gun, shoot people, punch some more people, maybe kill a cat, get in a shootout with the cops, ultimately lose, and then just walk out of the hospital. That's, that, that's pretty much GTA 5. Even when I play at 5900 by 1080 bezel corrected resolution with NVIDIA surround, I still stay right around 60 frames per second, even with all the settings cranked up like they are. But you can see the game runs very, very smooth, even in NVIDIA surround resolutions. And so there is a lot of room to drop the settings if I want to improve the frame rate. And there's even a little bit of headroom to improve the settings further if I want the game to look better. But the game looks absolutely fantastic. And if you've never played it in surround before, you should definitely try it. It changes the game entirely. Another really popular game right now is Battlefield Hardline. And you can see here I'm getting about 190 frames per second. And it does fluctuate all over the place, but I do stay in the high hundreds on this game. Also note that the graphics settings are on ultra for everything right now. Now, not surprisingly, this game plays a lot like GTA 5. You just run around and hit people as many times as you can with your baton or shoot them in the face with your gun, your choice. Or if you wanna play goody goody two shoe, I guess you can arrest them and take them in. But uh, overall, I think it's a great game. It does have some problems with the cinematic scenes running at weird frame rates and things like that. But the actual gameplay itself is very smooth and a lot of fun to play in campaign mode. Now let's go ahead and switch it over to NVIDIA surround mode. So here we're running at 5900 by 1080 bezel corrected NVIDIA sound resolution. You can see the frame rate is still sitting right around 60 frames per second, which is comfortable for me. But if you're somebody who likes to play at a much higher frames per second or you have one of the high speed monitors, of course, you can lower the settings a lot. Remember, we are sitting at ultra settings right now, so we have a lot of room to drop those settings down to improve the frame rate. But I pretty much want to push this thing as hard as I can. So as you guys can clearly see, a dual Xeon system is still more than capable of gaming. A lot of people have this misconception that Xeons are just not gaming processors. And you're right, fundamentally they aren't, and dollar for dollar, they're not the best value if all you're doing is gaming. But realize this is a workstation first. I need this to be a powerhouse and to be able to handle massive multitasking, which it does phenomenally. But as you can see, it's still more than capable of gaming. All right, so the primary role of this machine is helping me with my YouTube channel. So I use it for Adobe Premiere CC 2014, and I use it for rendering. So right here, I'm gonna go ahead and render a video using H.264 codec at a 12 to 18 megabit per second encoding rate and a 192 uh, kilobit per second audio rate. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and open a stopwatch so that we're not just looking at the estimated times because the estimated times are dead wrong.
The total render time for this 4K video is 11 minutes and 38 seconds on my new PC. And here we are rendering the exact same project with the exact same settings on my old system, which was a 4.6 gigahertz overclock 3930K i7 with 16 gigs of RAM and two 684 the win editions. And you can see it takes 14 minutes and 12 seconds to finish. Also take into account that the old system was using a 100% CPU utilization, whereas the new system was right around 60 to 70%. All right, guys, and one of the last things I wanna show you here is my virtual machines. This is another big part of what I do, and this is VMware Workstation 10 hosting five of my virtual machines. The first one here is FreeBSD 64-bit, and it's just a VM that I keep around just to tinker around with FreeBSD because it's something that's kind of new to me. It's very similar to Linux, uh, but with the GNOME 3 interface, it, it is quite a bit different from what I'm used to. And then I also have a Linux Mint distribution installed. It's the 64-bit version. And I have Open Arena playing right now, which uses the Quake 3 engine. So you can see hardware accelerated 3D graphics can run under a VM. I also have a Windows 7 VM. This is 64-bit Windows 7. And I keep this around just for testing software, especially when I'm developing stuff on Windows 8. And I just want to make sure it still works on Windows 7 or vice versa. I also have a Windows 8.1 VM running. And this is where I put my development environment. If you guys watch my Codegasm series where I teach you how to code, I use a VM to run the environment. And the main reason is if I develop something that crashes the computer, I can literally just reset the state of the VM and then everything's back to normal. So I don't have to risk my desktop. And then last but not least, I have a Windows 10 preview VM here, just cause you know, curiosity killed the cat. And I like to keep tabs on Windows 10 and where it's going. So far I'm, I'm pretty underwhelmed overall, especially with the graphics <laughs> in the UI, but they are doing some interesting things with the start menu. And I like that modern apps are, you know, somewhat usable now that they can be in a window. Now, another really cool thing is you can run all the VMs full screen just by pressing Control Alt Enter in VMware. And I can actually switch between each one of them and have them full screen. And when they have focus, everything like Control Alt Delete and all of the key sequences go directly to the VM. So it, for all intents and purposes, feels like you're using it like it's the primary operating system that's installed. Another really neat thing is because I have 24 cores and 64 gigs of memory, I have all five of these VMs running all at the same time, all doing things and I can still go play games like GTA 5. I can still use Adobe Premiere. I can still do all my other programs and they have sufficient resources to run fantastic despite having all these other operating systems running. All right, so as you guys can see, this thing is a multitasking beast. Over here, I have a Linux Mint virtual machine running, and I have Open Arena running on the Quake 3 engine. Over here, I have Windows uh, 10 preview, technical preview running in a VM right here. Up here, we have Adobe Premiere rendering the first half of this video. And down here, we have GTA 5 running in a benchmark mode, and they're all doing just fantastic. And that's one of the great things about a dual processor workstation is I have 24 cores and 64 gigabytes of RAM, so it's easy to divvy that up in a bunch of different ways to accomplish a bunch of goals in parallel. Now, don't get me wrong, if your only initiative is gaming and you wanna maximize your frames per second, go with a cheaper i7 and overclock the crap out of it. But when you're somebody like me that's doing a lot of editing, programming, using virtual machines and gaming all on the same system and at the same time, it makes sense to have something like this. So guys, if you're interested in my specific system, there's a link in the video description or you can head over to Puget Systems and you can get my exact system. Or if you guys would like, you can get any variation on this specific system. And if you guys have a specific goal in mind, send mail to Puget Systems and tell them what you need. One of their specialties is consulting with people to figure out what they want. And that's what they did with me. I went and sat down with them and we talked about the goals of the system. And that's why I ended up with something that's so quiet, so efficient, and so fast. So guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it. To be honest, I spent more time editing this video than I think I have any other video. So let me know if you like it. It's, it's really important to know if, if you guys are enjoying what I'm creating here. Leave your comments down below. If you guys have a question about this specific system and you want to ask me as opposed to Puget Systems, come over and hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. And you guys can message me anytime. I'm pretty responsive over there. And uh, if there's anything else that you guys want to know about this system, I'd be happy to tell you. Well, guys, this has been a hell of a ride. This has been a hell of a system. And I don't think I'm going to be upgrading for a while because this is more than enough machine for anybody. All all right, guys, take it easy, and until next time. Hey, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also, come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself. <laughs>